Good afternoon, everyone. We are pleased to still have you with us uh, for this afternoon's session. And while waiting for the other participants, uh, let me uh, remind everyone else of uh, the uh, webinar guidelines that we are to observe during the uh, activity. So uh, we are advised to uh, please maintain the mute mode throughout the session, unless of course advised by the webinar managers. And uh, for video, all participants must have their cameras turned off. The moderator will announce the time when the videos should be turned on. We will capture a screenshot of all webinar attendees. The uh, webinar will also be recorded for documentation purposes. E-certificates will be issued for each topic in uh, the webinar upon uh, answering the evaluation feedback form. So feedback forms will be given after every uh, session, aside from uh, the uh, final uh, evaluation form for the whole activity. And uh, of course, an additional evaluation form will also be provided by the National Security Council. For questions, if you have questions to our resource speakers, uh, please type it in the uh, chat box at any point of uh, the webinar. And uh, please include your full name, the organization you belong to, and your address. The uh, webinar organizers will direct you to uh, the link for the feedback form. And uh, only registered participants who uh, answer the feedback forms and meet the attendance requirement will get the e-certificate, okay? So uh, good afternoon. May I also uh, acknowledge, may we acknowledge the, uh, uh, our partners, in uh, the academe and uh, government agencies for their uh, presence today. Of course, we have the uh, Ifugao State University, the uh, Isabella State University Kauaian Campus, uh, St. Louis University, and uh, the University of Baguio, King's College of the Philippines, Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology, Kiangan National High School and uh, the Department of Education, Ifugao, Trinity University of Asia, Quezon City, the uh, Benquet State University, uh, representative from the Carino State University, and uh, Mapua. We also have a representative from the USC Graduate School and the San Beda College, Alabang. Uh, from the Cavite State University, Marinduque State College, the uh, Tagum Longford College in Davao del Norte, and uh, the Polytechnic University of uh, the Philippines. We have uh, participants from University of San Agustin, Iloilo, and uh, uh, an attendee from the Sherwood College of Professional Management in Lucknow, uh, Uttar Pradesh, India. Also, our uh, partners from uh, the various LGUs in uh, Ifugao are with us, and uh, members from uh, the uh, Army. Also, uh, participants from the Technological University of the Philippines, uh, the St. Mary's University, and uh, the Holy Cross at uh, Davao College. Also, members of uh, uh, some members of the Philippine National Police are with us. We have our students 
political science students from uh, the Ifugao State University joining us uh, on our Facebook Live. And uh, of course, uh, students from uh, the uh, College of Criminal Justice Education, faculty uh, members and students who are with us this afternoon. So, uh, Sir Rolly, we shall proceed with uh, the uh, introduction of our first resource speaker for this uh, afternoon, who will be talking on uh, the structures of uh, the CPP MPA. Okay, so to introduce our uh, resource speaker, may I call on uh, Mr. Rolly Kef B. Nabanalan, uh, the faculty of uh, the uh, political science department. Okay, so thank you very much, Mame, and good afternoon again to everybody. So I'm tasked to introduce to you the first uh, resource speaker for this afternoon. So the speaker for this afternoon or the resource speaker for this afternoon is a former student leader and a campus writer, as well as a youth and student organizer, community and multi-sectoral mobilizer, all for his being a leader cadre and operative of the CPP and PANDF in Western Visayas in the Panay Islands. Now, he graduated twice as valedictorian in both his elementary and secondary or high school education and was a consistent on roll and dean's lister during his university days at West Visayas State University in Iloilo City. He had 20 years of direct revolutionary experience with the CPP, NPA, and DF, where he was able to combine both the red area and the white area operations in which he was even deployed by the CPP to the National Intelligence Unit of NPA National Operations Command or NPA NOC. And the unit was under direct supervision of the CPP Central Committee National Military Commission. After he went back to the mainstream of the society, he was able to graduate with a degree of Bachelor of Arts major in political science and is currently undergoing a master's degree for public governance. He is a top passer and the holder of the Career Civil Service Professional Eligibility, that's level two, which uh, also qualifies him for government service. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's give a virtual welcome to our first resource speaker for this afternoon, Jeffrey K. Eric Salis, sir. Maraming salamat. Good afternoon sa pagtitipon po na ito. Uh, I'm very happy to be invited to this uh, very important gathering where we are going to talk about the uh, current national situation affecting our country and our people. And uh, with my experience of more than two decades with the CPP, NPA, NDF, I hope I can share with you the uh, perspective and understanding of why the CPP, NPA, NDF was able to survive for the last 52 years and why it continues to be considered for the last 50 years that it is still the number one single biggest threat to national security, even though it is sometimes considered also as the most organized systematic crime syndicate to ever evolve and exist in the face of the earth. Isa siyang malaking sindikatong kriminal, pero nagtatago siya sa ideolohiya ng Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism, ideologies which are already outdated and considered as library reference material in the many parts of Europe uh, where this started. The Soviet Union was already broken down into several 
independent and clashing states. Uh, it started in the 1917 of the Bolshevik Revolution. But now, uh, Soviet Union, after the Glasnost and Perestroika program during the era of Gorbachev, is no longer advocating communism. And even China, what is remaining of China after Mao Zedong's death as the chairman of the Communist Party of China, after their war of liberation against Chiang Kai-shek and the Kuomintang was over, after 50 years, China is no longer a socialist country as it professes to be through its Communist Party of China. Ironically, China is a competing hegemonic power in Asian region or in the Asia Pacific region, including Oceania, where the controversial issue on the West Philippine Sea and the conduct on the West Philippine Sea has always been a very intense debate public issue that has grappled our country because of the attitude of China and the conduct of its foreign policy and relations among its neighbors, which is no longer an indicator that China is adhering still to the socialist and communist ideology, but rather of a capitalist hegemonic power. But why the communist ideology with their belief on the outmoded, outdated, archaic kind of ideology, which I referred to as library materials already for the present time, why does the CPP, NP, and the continue to cling into the belief that they can overthrow the government and restore a political and social order in economic direction geared towards a communist pattern from socialist perspective towards a communist rule. Bakit kaya? And for the last one week ago, our country has been horrified by a lot of successive attacks terrorist attacks initiated by the NPA under the rule and guidance of the Communist Party of the Philippines against civilians in Bicol region. More particularly three days ago, their roadside bombing attack in uh, Masbati killed a very promising young athlete by the name of Kit Absalon, a national player for, for football, and at the same time, an athlete promising to be part of the national team for football and his uncle. And yet all that the CPP, NP, and NDF can offer is a just sorry, hindi namin sinasadya at susubukan namin hindi na mauulit po ito. But that is not true. And sorry is not enough. While the deepening silence from among the ranks of their conspirators, mga dati namin kasama, na kumilos din ako dyan bilang uh, urban operators. Some of them are in Congress, aning sila, representing the CPP party list na nagpapakilalang makabayan, their group karapatan na nagpapakilalang human rights defender, and all those pretending to be social activists and human rights defenders groups, which are identified with the CPP, NPA, and NDF, not a single word from them. Ang maririnig natin, na kinakondina nila ang hindi makatao and similarly equivalent to crimes against humanity na ginagawa ng CPP, NP, NDF in violation of international humanitarian law and even the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Ano po mga malalaking krimen na ito na nakita natin in the last 52 years that the CPP, NP, NDF has existed? Una, pinasabugan po nila ng granada ang Liberal Party Rally in 1971 sa Plaza Miranda sa Metro Manila. It was under the orders of Joma Sison. It's an internal knowledge among CPP members like us na yan ay kagagawa ng CPP in order for them to precipitate the situation, polarize the political condition, and force Marcos to do an excessive state repression by way of martial law declaration that can result to a more polarizing political situation thereby recruiting more, especially from the ranks of the youth, to join the armed revolution in the 1970s. That was the purpose why they killed more than 10 civilians 
and injured more than 100 in the Plaza Miranda Bank, which do, they do not publicly admit and account for their crimes about that. The Rano massacre in 1987 in Dabao Digos area, where they killed the NPA unit in Dabao, killed, massacred 39 civilians, members of the local church. Out of the 39, 21 were children, and many more were women. And still, no justice and retribution and no accountability uh, was ever made by the CPP and PNDF. They were also responsible. Our organization is also responsible for the implementation of internal purging or cleansing among the ranks of suspected government spies and government agents in the 1980 hang, hanggang mahag, maagang bahagi ng 1990, which killed among us 3,700 plus na mga innocent at hindi napatunayan na mga government spies but members of the CPP and PNDF during the purging conducted by the CPP and PNDF from 1984 to 1991. And before the Absalon case in Masbate, the CPP and PNDF also attacked the PNP patrol in Talakag Bukidnon in North Central Mindanao, resulting to the death of a four-month-old baby. And on the account of Mindanao Indigenous People's Council of Elders, MEPSIL, group of uh, tribal council el and elders of uh, Mindanao IP or Indigenous People's Groups, mga katutubo sa Mindanao, in their account for the last 20 years, more than 1,000 of their leaders, civilians also, were assassinated, killed, and attacked by the CPP and in, in, in Mindanao for the last 20 years. All of this are systematic patterns showing the propensity of the CPP and PNDF to commit crimes against humanity and scandalously violate international humanitarian law, even if they profess that they are revolutionary, that they are engaged in civil war, even if they profess that uh, they are protecting and advancing the interests of the Filipino masses, their actions and their actual deeds on the ground betray the real nature of this organization. So allow me, please, to give you some insights in my uh, limited time uh, for this uh, webinar and, uh, and uh, forum that we are having. Uh, this is about our understanding of the operations of the CPP, NPA, and the next slide. Please. So we have to understand the background. What do we mean by white area and red area operations? Uh, sa maikling pagpapaliwanag, kapag sinabi natin red area operations on the parlance and lexicon of the CPP, NPA, NDF, ito ay area kung saan direktang kumikilos ang NPA. In the red area, the primary form of operations ay armado. And the primary organization that organizes, agitates, radicalizes the people, especially ang mga magsasaka, manggagawang bukid, plantation workers, mga katutubo, sa mga area ng rural communities ng Pilipinas na tinatawag nating red area, kapag red area, NPA ang direktang gumagalaw at direktang lumulubog sa mga komunidad upang udyukan ng taong bayan na lumaban sa gobyerno at ibagpak ang gobyerno. Kapag sinabing white area, simply, Ito ay urban areas, town centers, schools, universities, factories, mine areas, a church, media, offices, barangays in the town centers in the poblacion. These are white area, which means uh, hindi direct ang kumikilos ang NPA, but ang kumikilos at nag-organize, nag-radicalize ng mga tao ay ang kagaya naming mga kadre, at organizers ng CPP, NPA, NDF who come by the different front organizations. And the most deceitful and manipulative front organization pretending to be legislators and representatives are the CPP party list group, which had successfully infiltrated the Congress uh, as an institution by way of the party list system. Makabayan block, as they call themselves, these are created 
by the Communist Party of the Philippines and all there sitting are all CPP cadre, just like me, when I was still part of the white area for 12 years. And in my nine years in, in the NPA, I can explain both ways and modalities of operations. So the party list operations, the electoral process, the infiltration of government sector, the recruitment of teachers, students, government workers, employees, church workers, and religious community, the media, and even at the international level, among, government, among, among OFWs or overseas Filipino workers, all of these comprise the so-called white area. And these are mainly political in nature, but with underground component that connects and supports the armed terrorism of the CPP, NPA, and the F in the red area. The CPP and the underground operations are also present in the white area, but they are being covertly embedded inside the front organizations and front alliances. Next, there are the framework that we have to understand, as well as the framework vis-a-vis -vis the existence of the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or the ntf -ELCA. Next slide, please. Uh, please enter. Yeah, we can skip that uh, animation. Let's uh, proceed to the next one. Yeah, so that we cannot consume a lot of time. Okay. This is the political line of the CPP, NP, NDF for the last 52 years. Hindi po ito nagbago. They believe in the two forms of struggle. The primary is armed struggle. And the secondary is the so-called political, legal, and parliamentary struggle. So the National Democratic Revolution, which they try to present as an alternative political system and line of movement for the Filipino nation, for the Filipino people, is a violent line that advocates armed terrorism, advocates armed struggle, and the CPP, NP, NDF is using this to organize and agitate people from the countryside known as Red Area. The secondary form, which is more deceitful, manipulative, and scheming, is the so-called legal, political, and parliamentary struggle, which use the so-called front organizations to infiltrate, radicalize, organize, mobilize, and uh, constitute their political base in the urban and town centers, particularly among the so-called youth and students, the intelligentsia, and the middle class, the workers, and other sectors in the urban and town centers. Second point, the revolutionary mass movement, uh, hindi ko po siya nakikita kasi natatabunan siya na, ano ba yan? Pwede, can, can we minimize this? Na kakadistract po ito. Yung view admit, can we remove that? The revolutionary mass movement in the cities and town centers is basically an open, legal, defensive, democratic movement representing the human rights issues, the workers' issues, and other issues of the different sectors being exploited by the CPP, NP, and the F. But actually, it is involved and connected to the underground operations, which are armed activities of the CPP, NP, and the F. The red area where the armed operations of the NPA are mainly executed, and the white area, which is mainly political, legal, parliamentary operations that pretend to be as such, but with a component of underground network operations connected in a supporting the armed struggle component in the countryside. These are the components of the political operations and the political line of the CPP, NP, NDF, known as National Democratic Revolution, combining armed operations and legal parliamentary operations, but with underground connections. Those are the two modalities of approach of the CPP, NPA, NDF na ginagawa nila for the last 52 years. Kung kaya, you cannot expect uh, Sara Ilago, Ferdinand Gaite, Carlos Sarate, and the rest of the so-called CPP Makabayan Party List to condemn 
this uh, very brutal attack on civilians in Masbate, which uh, the CPP, NP, and the have publicly admitted you cannot expect them to condemn because they belong to the same group. Only that they pretend to be operating on legal above ground front operations. But actually, they are connected to the underground operations because that is the orientation in doctrine. That's the way we do things when it comes to white area operations or the urban operations. We have to have front cover in order for us to hide the real intent of our organizations in the areas where the influence on information and political and economic power of the government or the state are dominant in the town and uh, urban centers. So that is why we have to pretend. Uh, how can we minimize this? This uh, notification covers my slide. I cannot uh, proceed. Is there any way for that to be minimized, uh, technical? Uh, or do we have to break and uh, let the, the other participants enter? What, what's, the, what's the pleasure of the moderator? May I request the moderator? We'll work, sir, on uh, minimizing this. Oh, uh, natatabunan ko niya ang, ang discussion na napuputol ko yung momentum ko. At hindi ko nakikita ang slide. Okay. Do we have to go for a break so that you can accept and makapagtuloy-tuloy tayo? What's the pleasure of the moderator? Yes, sir. We'll go ahead and uh, take a break for three minutes. So that uh, ilimit yun at kung mong hindi kaya ano ilimit na lang natin. Otherwise, we cannot proceed, uh, and uh, that discussion flow can be uh, distracted. Let's go for a ten-minute break, please. May I request? Yes, sir.
May I request the moderator if we can proceed now? I think we have addressed the uh, technical issue, sir. We can uh, go ahead and uh, proceed with uh, the discussion. Okay, thank you for that. So as I was saying, uh, for the last 52 years, the single biggest national security threat that our country has faced is none other than the CPP, NPA, NPF. It is the most organized, systematic breed of syndicate crimes uh, rolled into one, but hiding and pretending to have an ideology. An ideology that is archaic, foreign, and uh, outmoded and long rejected in the modern civilization of building society. Hindi na po ginagamit ang Marxism, Leninism, and Mawism. Yung mga paniniwala ni Marx, ni Leninet ni Mao, sa buong planetang Earth at sa buong yung universe ng Milky Way, sa Pilipinas na lang po ginagamit na sinusubukan ng Communist Party of the Philippines, ng NPA at ng NDF, to fashion style their, 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 their organization as if they are the ideology uh, leaders, the ideological leaders of our country, and uh, they have an alternative uh, political, economic, and socio-economic political programs. But as I have uh, been saying just a while ago, the so-called National Democratic Revolution as the political line and the general direction of the CPP, NPA, NDA for the last 52 years, this is a violent belief and a violent program that uh, intends to radicalize, recruit, and mobilize the Filipino people to overthrow the government by way of armed revolution supported by their legal and parliamentary political operation in the urban areas. And it has cost our country for the last five decades 50,000 dead, 35,000 civilians, and 15,000 police and armed forces or security sector members. And for the last 20 years, according to Japan International Cooperation Agency or JICA, the Philippines is bleeding 100 billion pesos every year just for us to finance our counterinsurgency operations uh, so that uh, we can prevent the CPP, NPA, NDF from uh, succeedingly overthrowing our government. But seemingly, the counterinsurgency war that we have been financing for the last 20 years with 100 billion pesos ay nasasayang lamang dahil hindi rin natin nakikita ang katapusan ng digmaang ito. The CPP, NPA, and NDF are not winning and they are not capable to overthrow the government but they are capable to make smart and globe telecommunications, big contractors and politicians, and big business pay them extortion operation money known in the revolutionary movement as RBQU or revolutionaryong buwi sa kaaway sa uri or revolutionary taxation but under the revised penal code these are nothing but plain and simple extortion operation amounting to almost 600 million pesos every year pre-pandemic maybe bumaba ito ng kalahati but they can be able to put up 300 million pesos a year from extortion operation. And our law enforcement uh, power and even the units of the Philippine National Police cannot be able to put a stop to this rampant, widespread, highly organized extortion operations. And also, they can be able to generate 100 to 200 billion pesos from their NGO conduit operations from abroad uh, by way of organizing NGOs, people's organizations, and submitting project proposals and international liaising operations among funding agencies in Europe, in the US, particularly in uh, Netherlands, Norway, Belgium, uh, Germany, Italy, and Spain, where they can be able to generate 100 to 200 million pesos every year using the web of NGO conduit operations similar to the so-called legal laundering of money using the NGO cover. And we cannot prevent them by way of our law enforcement power because they can circumvent the law and the CPP, NP, and NDF can even utilize the law to their advantage to weaken the law enforcement power of the government. 
Those are the things of reality na nangyayari that the government cannot prevent them. Although they are not winning the war of insurgency against the government, but they are causing us a lot of damage and destruction. Next slide, please. Proceed, please. Okay, next slide. Oops. Uh, balik ng konti. Yan. The organization of the CPP, NPA, and the F, as you can see on the screen, uh, aside from other security threat groups like Abu Sayyaf, uh, BIFF, uh, Mauti ISIS, MILF, MNLF, and other crime groups, wala pong makakapantay sa ganitong pagkaorganisado ng CPP, NPA, and they may not be big in numbers, but they are deliberate, purposive, intentional, and methodical in their approach of building their organization. From the national level down to the regional, line work operations, including regional, provincial, down the line to the barangay, and even to the international department. As you can see on the slide, they have the international department. The international department or the ID is uh, the uh, unit of the CPP that is based in Europe, in Netherlands. And it orchestrates the operations of the CPP internationally, including infiltration of the United Nations body, uh, the Special Rapporteur, and other forms of UN bodies, European Union, and other foreign governments critical of the current administration. For the last 47 years, the CPP, NPA, and the F was able to put up the international department so that they become a proto-diplomatic unit performing the so-called quasi-diplomatic operations and uh, other international alliances that promote the narrative of the CPP, NPA, NDF at that international level to the detriment of our country. At hindi po yan masyadong nasasagot ng ating Philippine foreign mission until there was the creation of national task force to end local communist armed conflict. And until today, the more than 10 million Filipino workers and Filipino communities combined ang nag-organize, nag-radicalize po sa kanila at nag-agitate sa kanila ay ang CPP, NPA, NDF through the organization known as Migrante and uh, other organizations such as Compatriot which is an underground organization supporting the armed revolution in the Philippines. And these are established inside the chapters of Migrante. Napakalakas po ng kanilang organizing sa mga Pilipino community sa US, sa Europe, and even po sa hanay ng mga manggagawang Pilipino sa Hong Kong. Uh, similarly, the red, sorry, the white area operations or the urban-based operations of the CPP, NPA, NDF are also exported towards uh, the areas of Southern California, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Portland, and even sa New Jersey and uh, Washington and New York. These are areas in the U.S. where the CPP, NPA, NDF front organizations are very active and they can operate and pretend as if they are not calling for the overthrow of U.S. imperialism in the country as if they are just for the civil and political rights of the people. But actually, these organizations are extension and replica of the front organizations created by the Communist Party in the Philippines. And they have one thing in common. They want to overthrow the government, and they want to do it by supporting and providing material, moral, and other support to the NPA so that uh, come times uh, related to it, they can be able to use the widespread violence for the weakening of the government and eventually seizure of political power by way of armed struggle, armed revolution and not through election. So in the US and in the Europe, the in-charge unit is known as international department. And in the entire country, they are able to develop such a sense of organization that for every aspect of work they want to do, in order to arouse, organize, and mobilize the people, there is a unit of the Communist Party in charge. 
for every sector and for every target and for every community, even local and international. Next slide. Enter, please. They have the National Peasant Commission that is in charge for the three rural sectors, the farmers, the agrarian or agricultural workers, and even the indigenous people. And this is a CPP unit in charge for the strengthening of uh, movement among the rural communities that are supportive of the armed operations of the NPA. It is under the National Peasant Commission. Next slide or enter. They have the National Organization Department that is in charge for organizing, agitating, and mobilizing the youth and student sector, the workers, the women, the urban poor, the transport sector, the government workers. So the very deliberate, the basic sectors of society are being targeted deliberately uh, so that uh, they become organized in a manner aligned to the political line of the CPP, NPA, and the which is the National Democratic Revolution. So that there is an organization of the Communist Party focusing to them. Next. Yeah, next, please. You have also the, the so-called National United Front Commission. It's a point in charge sa pagpapalakas ng infiltration and radicalization sa hana ng mga guru, mga health professionals, mga middle class sectors, small business, the church group and religious community, the media, and even uh, pagbubuo ng mga non-government organizations, pagbubuo ng mga broad tactical alliances, uh, including the current effort of the CPP to infiltrate among the ranks of one Sambayan led by Justice uh, Carpio. Uh, ang tawag dyan ay United Front Building Operations or Broad Tactical Alliances. Ginawa na rin po namin yan sa pagpapabagsak noon kay Pangulong Estrada nang binuo namin ng era resign movement at kasabwat namin noon sila Pangulong uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo when she was still the Vice President. So nothing new, nothing strange, but only that some of yeah. our uh, uh, class of the ruling elites are seemingly uh, ignoring deliberately or unwittingly either that this is a collaborative conspiratorial opportunist operations uh, being waged by the CPP in order for them to infiltrate through political operations among traditional political groups that is now happening in one Sambayan where Sarate and Colmenares and a lot of members of Bagong Aliansang Makabaya, regional and national, are being embedded into the broad opposition alliance. But deep inside, there are CPP operatives infiltrating inside. Similarly, sinabi ko nga kanina, kaganyan din ang ginawa namin ng era resign movement. Kasama din namin ang mga politiko na yan. But eventually, nang umupo si Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo bilang Pangulo, kami rin na nag-sumikap noon na pabagsakin ng kanyang gobyerno. Similarly, ganun din ang ginawa kay Noy Noy, even kay Cory Aquino, na naging uh, daan upang mapalaya sila Joma Season, but less than two years. Nangyari na rin ulit na binangga pa rin ang Communist Party of the Philippines si Cory Aquino. Even si President Duterte. He was very friendly with the CPP and PNDF when he was still Davao City Mayor. At nagbigay pa nga siya in the, last, uh, in the first two years, 2016 to 2017, hanggang early part of 2018, tatlong cabinet secretaries niya ay mga CPP, party, uh, CPP Communist Party members. Hardcore, Judy Tagiwalo, Paeng Mariano, and Lisa Massa. NAPC, uh, DSWD, and uh, Department of Agrarian Reform, and more than 20 uh, na mga undersecretaries in ASEX at mga uh, consultant ang nakapasok sa government. But not anymore today. When uh, they were exposed that their objective is not about helping the government develop transformative and good governance, but rather infiltrate the government and 
push forward and advocate for their own agenda using the funds and resources of the government and the power and institutions of the government for them to recover their mass base and recruit a lot of people towards their own organization, but not to help the government. Kaya tinigil na yun. CPP International Department is like just a foreign affairs unit. It's like a U.S. State Department operating abroad. It is representing the cycle of operations of the CPP based in Europe, in the U.S., and even in Asia. Joma Sison and the rest of the CPP cadres are operating inside the CPP International Department based in Utrecht, the Netherlands. Enter next. Next, please. This is what I was uh, uh, talking about. Yung general political line of the CPP, NPA, and NDF ay hindi po para sa kapayapaan. They are not for peace. No matter how they profess into the high heavens that they are for peace, their general political line, ito po yung pinag-aaralan natin, ito talaga siya. Their objective is to seize political power. Agawin ang kapariyang pampolitika sa pamamagitan ng armadong pakikibaka. Katuwang ang uh, suporta ng demokratiko at revolusyonaryong kilosang masa sa kalunsuran. This is the urban operation, the white area. And the objective is very clear, pabagsin ng gobyerno. And magtatayo siya ng sariling gobyerno. But the main form of this transformation that they are asserting is not election, but armed revolution. Madugo po ito. At ang patutunguhan nito, hindi demokrasya. Ang patutunguhan nito ay sosyalismo, where the Communist Party of the Philippines shall control the entire political machinery of the government from barangay up to the national. And they shall call that dictatorship of the proletariat. That is the deception that they do not openly uh, tell the people kapag sinabi nilang sumama ka sa kilusan dahil ang gobyerno ng Pilipinas ay bulok, rakot at uh, mamamatay tao. But they do not say na ang patutunguhan ng gobyerno nila ay pagpatay at pagdanak ng dugo at paggamit ng karahasan. At ang direksyon nito ay komunismo, hindi demokrasya. And so therefore, we have to understand that the perspective of the enemy is power, not peace. Ang layunin ng CPP and PND pa hindi kalayaan at kapayapaan kung hindi kapangyarihan. Power. It is very clear in their political and general strategic line. Next slide, please. Okay, go po. These are the operational activities that they do when they are conducting white area operations. Ibig sabihin po, kapag nag-recruit sila sa loob ng Polytechnic University of the Philippines, UP Diliman, Ipogaw State University, and many state universities and schools and colleges, the direction for them is not only to produce activists, but to produce organizers and cadres who shall be deployed to the NPA unit so that they become political officers and leaders of the Communist Party of the Philippines. That has always been the pattern. That has always been the practical, operational orientation. Uh, lalo na lang nandun din po ako. I started as campus writer. College Editors Guild of the Philippines bago ma-deploy sa NUSP for Student Council to Operation, bago ma-deploy sa Anak Bayan at bago ma-deploy sa Kabataan Party Operations noon na tumulong sa pagbubuo nito, we were ordinary activists. But later on, we were all recruited one by one, individually, to become organizers and cadres and leaders of the Communist Party of the Philippines, eventually deploying to the NPA. Sa akin, 12 years ako nag-operate sa urban areas, schools, universities, factories, offices, church, mass campaign, mass alliances, and then uh, nine years sa NPA. Total is 21 years. From 1990 to 2011. So very clear that the urban operations or the mass movement in the cities and the, and the town centers are directed to support the armed operations of the NPA in the rural communities because their doctrine is the red area where the NPA operates mainly in the rural communities is inseparable from the white area operations which are mainly conducted in the urban and town centers. 
the red area and the white area may be distinct in character but in separable in operation. And they are linking and complementing with one another with the primacy of the armed struggled area supported by the urban and political operations in the so-called white area. That is their doctrine. And so therefore, the government must address both simultaneously, not one after the other. It should be simultaneously addressed by the government and all concerned sectors and agencies. Next po. Next. Next. These are the purpose. The purpose is to create underground movement in the urban centers. When you are recruited into the Anakbayan, League of Filipino Students, or Kabataan Party, or even uh, Gabriela Youth, or any organization for that matter, front organizations created, managed, administered, and led by the Communist Party cadres in the urban areas, you have a high probability chance that you will also be recruited into the underground component, which is supporting and providing conspiratorial activities uh, towards the advancement of armed atrocities and operations of the CPP, NPA, and the Kaya po, mga kabataan, na maraming nawawala, kagaya namin noon, na mga I was only 18 years old when I go all time. When I, when I was deployed, to the different schools and universities. And uh, when I was about to turn 19, I already uh, became a full member of the Communist Party of the Philippines until 41 years old. So almost 22 years of my life was, were spent with the CPP, NPA, and DF. That is how they develop leaders. That is how they develop uh, leaders among themselves among the organizations and the priority by way of experience and direct practice are the youth and students. Dahil madali po silang gawing kadre, uh, within two to three years, pwede na maging leader sila ng Communist Party of the Philippines, political guide sa NPA, and political propaganda agitator sa iba't ibang sektor. Mahirap po gumawa ng kadre mula sa manggagawa. It will take you more than five to seven years. Lalo na sa mga magsasaka, it will take you 10 years more than para magkaroon ka ng kadre. Pag sinabing kadre, organizer, political operator, agitator, propagandista, writer, mobilizer, tactician, theoretician, all in one. Yan pong isang kadre. So it takes them two to three years only to develop cadres or communist party leaders from the youth and students. Next slide po. That is why they need the urban operations. Okay? So again, I am showing you the slide uh, to emphasize that the approach on arouse, organize, mobilize the people or the masses being the center point of the communist insurgency movement in the Philippines. Ang kanyang process ay very deliberate and very organized with particular and specific party units assigned to focus on operational recruitment and administrative functions to develop a systematic approach of mass-based building, political operations, alliance building, propaganda, agitation, and other forms of political activities intended to weaken the government and eventually overthrow the entire ruling system. Next. Yes, I already discussed this. It's about organizing the basic sectors of workers youth and students, women, etc. Next. This is about the middle class and the other sectors in the middle class that are being agitated and being uh, radicalized to join the armed revolution later on. Next. Uh, these are the organization. Please, uh, when you see the slide down below with the name National Democratic Front Organizations, these are organizations related to the armed revolution. Uh, on the left side, the NDF organization are known as Underground Mass Organization or UGMU. They are part and parcel of the support network operations that provide logistics, uh, personnel, and material and financial support to the operations of the CPP NPA. 
Therefore, the organizations under NDF and the NDF itself are not legal, but these are illegal underground organizations advocating for the violent overthrow of the government through armed revolution. In the middle slide, you can see the party list operations which the TPP, NPA, NDF are using in order to exploit and maximize the available legal and democratic space provided by the law, particularly our election law, which allows the CPP, NPA, NDF to be able to participate in the party list elections. And for the last 20 years, they were successful to infiltrate the Congress and make themselves become embedded inside Congress by way of the party list of it, uh, operations and interventions. On the last slide, on the rightmost, you can see the different sectoral organizations, which Joma Sison himself identified as their front organizations during his speech in 1988 in Brussels, Belgium. So these are not red tagging. By the way, red tagging is an internal terminology concocted and created by the Communist Party of the Philippines in order for them to be able to evade legal accountability from the government. That is why they do not admit that there is an underground component inside the organization because they want to dissociate themselves from the armed revolutionary movement of the CPP, NPA, NDF and uh, from the armed atrocities conducted by the CPP, NPA, NDF, they want to dissociate themselves from that. So they are using the front organizations as their cover. And these are the different front sectoral organizations that you can see on the slide. Next slide, please. Yes, Propaganda Commission, uh, Education Commission, Finance, and everything. All the essential line work in administrative work of an organization, you can see that the CPP, NPA, NDF, they are so organized and so deliberate that they can be able to survive and persist to attack and destroy our country for the last 52 years because they have a very organized approach into their atrocities and terrorism on our country. Never before na nakita natin na may ganito kaorganisado, well-defined na mga structure and operational orientation and doctrine ang CPP, NPA, NDA until na-expose natin ito sa kasama sa mga former rebels and former cadres. Next slide. Yes, there are five tracks in the International Department. Uh, the first one is to infiltrate the United Nations and build organizations which are sympathetic to the armed component and operations of the CPP, NPA, NDF in the Philippines. Number two, establish solidarity network and diplomatic uh, alliances with the different governments, especially those advocating a libertarian rule and are openly against the way of the strong political leadership that the Duterte government is exhibiting. And then they also infiltrate the UN. They have also international missions and organization that build among the ranks of the OFWs and Filipino communities. Itinatayo po nila ang compatriot as underground organization supporting the armed revolution in the Philippines at ang Migrante International. And then they are also using the International League of People Struggle as their network platform to infiltrate the different organizations in abroad, which are sympathetic to the cause of Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism, and other ideology related to Marxist ideology. And they have also attempted to do the peace talks uh, in order to deceive the country and deceive the people. That is as if the CPP, NPA, and the FR willing and ready to take part in the peace negotiation will in fact, they do not. They continue to attack our soldiers and our policemen, and they continue to burn down equipment by way of executing 37 arson cases in the last 
uh, peace talks and ceasefire agreement that we had with them for the last 155 days. Walang ibang ginawa ang CPP, NPA, and the F, especially in Mindanao. Manunog, mangbomba ng mga property ng Del Monte, ng Dole, at iba pang mga korporasyon na kinukutungan nila at magpalakas ng kanilang recruitment sa mga kapatahan. That is why they need to go back to the peace negotiation so that they can have cover and money over na hindi po sila mapaghihinalaan na sila ay nagsusulong lamang ng puro teroristang mga gawain. But not anymore. Under President Duterte's watch, hindi na sila pwede magpunwari na sila ay bahagi ng uh, government effort uh, para tulungan ang ating mga kababayan. Let's go. Next. Ito yung mga structure pagdating sa region. So you have a committee system and they have also focused units of the Communist Party, NPA, NDF assigned to do the particular tasking. Okay? So iba-ibang structure sa ibang region but very relative. The common denominator is all the tasking in the Communist Party of the Philippines and all the programs of the NPA and all the utilization of the National Democratic Front organizations or UGMO, underground mass organization, it is the one organization of the Communist Party of the Philippines na siyang kumukumpas sa lahat at all levels. Next po. Okay? These are the framework of the sectors that they want to target and they want to radicalize, mobilize, and eventually uh, ini-expect nila ito na sasama sa kanila. Okay? Next. Okay, ito po yung kanyang uh, military line. They are waging guerrilla warfare for them to be able to uh, launch protracted people's war and uh, bleed the government with resources so that uh, they can weaken entirely the government and later on when the government becomes isolated and uh, becomes problematic in its existence and wala na siyang pondo, hindi na siya maka-exist, pabagsak ng gobyerno, saka sila kikilos upang agawin ang kapangyarihan sa gobyerno. That is the purpose of protracted people's war. Okay, next po. Go ahead. Okay. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, the National Democratic Revolution, ay malinaw po na ang layunin nito ay uh, i-organize radicalize at pagkikilusin ang iba't ibang sektor ng mamamayan, udyukan sila, i-agitate, and then conspire with them so that the people becomes angry at the government and they decide to take up arms and join the CPP, NPA, and the end. That is the purpose of their so-called mass-based building, armed struggle, and agrarian revolution. All of these are instrumentalities of propaganda. All of these are instrumentalities of agitation, recruitment, and mobilization. That the whole of government approach and the whole of nation approach ng ntf -LCAC or National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict ay dapat tugunan at banggain ito so that hindi lumalaganap ang kaisipan at pananaw na ang NPA lamang ang tagapagdulot ng social justice. We have to have a narrative to expose them na hindi social justice ang layunin nila, kung hindi communist justice ang hindi susunod sa kanila, papatayin nila. And the individual freedom and conscience are no longer tolerated kapag sila na nasa kapangyari. Next po. Enter. These are the stages of the Philippine uh, armed revolution being waged by the CPP, NPA, NDF. And for the last 52 years, nasa strategic defensive pa rin. They are not able to leap over and uh, become successful in the stalemate or pagkapatas or even in the strategic offensive. Because for the last 52 years, ang pinakamahalagang sangkap kung bakit hindi nagtatagumpay ang CPP, NPA, NDF despite of their perseverance, persistence, and consistency in their organization, in their operation, ang ideolohiyang paniniwala nila tungkol sa Marxism Leninism and Mawism, these are unacceptable foreign ideology to the majority of the Filipino people. Kaya hindi siya nagtatagumpay kasi hindi naman handa ang mga mamamayang Pilipino na sumama 
sa kanilang armadong revolusyon o pangpabagsakin ng gobyerno. So they do not succeed in their attempt but they create a lot of problems that can complicate our overall socio-economic and political growth as a country. And we are losing, sabi ko nga kanina, 100 billion pesos ng ating pundo ng kabanang bayan na pupunta lamang para sa paggastos ng ating counterinsurgency operations laban sa CPT, NPA, and NPA. Next slide. Next po. Yan, mga programs nila. And next po. Sige po, proceed lang. Ah. So they want to combine red area, white area, and they want to combine the tactics of utilizing uh, the government, utilizing the legal system, and utilizing the democratic space for them to be able to pretend and blend inside the different organizations, especially in the urban areas where they attempt to build the different organizations of the workers, urban poor, youth and students, women, and many more. Next slide. Yes. These are the directional orientation of red area, white area operations, so the CPP, NPA, and the NPA. It means that there is uh, a common denominator for this. The common denominator is, matagal na panahon po, pinabayaan lang natin ang CPP, NPA, and NDF sa ginagawa nilang mass base building. Ang pagre-recruit ng iba't ibang sektor, ang pagre-recruit ng iba't ibang mga grupo ng tao ay pinabayaan sila kung kaya they are able to survive uh, for the last 52 years. Because the strength and survival of any communist movement for that matter in any historical period sa buong daigdig, walang nagtatagumpay na communist movement kapag wala ang taong bayan at hindi sumuporta sa kanila. However, hindi naman natin nasasabi na hindi nila nakukuha ang taong bayan kasi nakakapag-recruit pa rin sila sa mga paaralan, kolehiyo, sa mga pabrika, sa mga barangay. But they may not be able to generate the so-called critical mass necessary for them to propel their social movement towards a level na abante naman at mas dominant na sila over the various sectors of society. Hindi pa nila naabot yan hanggang ngayon. And even their NPA are not capable either na mag-agaw ng kapangyarihan except for launching guerrilla warfare. Small unit tactics operations. Next. Sige po. That is the direction po of the white area. They want... Ah, pakibalik lang po. They want to achieve general uprising. Ang ibig sabihin po, they want to develop the sense of resistance among the people in the urban and town centers so that the people will go into a level na kapag na-organize nila at napakilos ang maraming sektor ng mamamayan sa urban areas, ay dudugtong ito sa pagsulong ng NPA sa red area. Kaya magkakaroon ng general uprising and general offensive. That is the reason that they are organizing the different sectors for the last 50 years with building of underground mass organizations so that they can develop the critical mass later on kapag nakachamba sila upang pabagsakin ang gobyerno natin at sila na ang hawak ng kapangyarihan. This is the purpose why they are patiently and consistently organizing among the ranks of the different sectors, especially sa youth and students, and even sa mga kabataan at iba pa, upang abutin sila at sumama sa general uprising later on. If walang magagawa ang gobyerno na mapigilan ito. Next, this is the direction. Uh, for every underground organization, there should be a front organization that shall coordinate and make a cover for the underground discrete operations. Kaya tinatawag sila ng mga front organizations ng CPT. Kasama na po dyan ang tagapagtagawyod at tagapagtanggol ng CPP, NPA, NDF, yung mga part kilis operatives nila na nagkukunwari mga kongresista din sila sa loob ng kongreso. Next. 
Next slide. Yes. Okay. Uh, those are the organizations sa iba't ibang gar ng Pilipinas at iba't ibang mga regions. Next po. Okay. Explanation po ito ah. We have to understand that the CPP controls absolutely and directs the NPA from all levels, national down the regional, provincial, and municipal level. It's the NPA that is being commanded by the party. Ang nagkapatakbo lahat ng gawain ng NPA, Communist Party of the Philippines. And then ang NDF, ito yung political arm ng Communist Party na ginagamit niya both underground and above ground. So maraming mga uh, personalities din ang nare-recruit nila sa underground at bumabalik lang sa above ground or front personalities nila. So that they can be able to effectively uh, develop a wider participation para sa kanilang revolutionary line. Kaya hindi totoo po na ang NPA ay independent at ang NDF ay hiwalay. No. Isa lang ang tumutuhog at nagdudugtong at namumuno sa kanila. Communist Party of the Philippines. Okay? So there are underground organizations both in the red area and white area. And the red area and the white area are interrelated to one another and they support the armed revolution of the CPP, NPA, NDF. Okay? And that is the reason why the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict is being created precisely to address the four important issues uh, about the CPP, NPA, NDF. Number one, to address the mass base. Issues related to sectoral concerns and community concerns, it must be addressed by the whole of the approach where agencies of the government, including local government units, must participate in problem solving and processing of the partnership of the community and the people in their sectors. Number two, the NTF LCAC or the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict is intended to prevent the CPP, NPA, NDF from infiltrating the different sectors and organizing freely uh, so that they can agitate and mobilize people to, re to uh, take up arms and revolt and go uh, with the NPA to join in the overthrow of the government. So the NTF LCAC is purposely to prevent recruitment and to counter their narrative. And number three, the NTF LCAC or National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict wants to win the people by way of security and development program being implemented on the ground, such as the Barangay Development Program for 2020 budget and many more activities related to strengthening the interaction and partnership of the government and uh, the community and other sectors. And lastly, the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict is purposely para po ang uh, CPP, NPA, NDF ay lubusan na pong mahiwalay sa taong bayan and they can be uh, decimated totally by combination of whole of government participation and the whole of nation approach where the entire people are uh, being encouraged to participate in the peace building measures and in being resilient uh, from radical infiltration of the government, uh, particularly sa recruitment and indoctrination ng mga sektor. Kailangan po magkaroon ng government action on all sectoral infiltration and radicalization. Therefore, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict. The situation may seem sometimes desperate because of the compounding problems, lalo na may pandemic ngayon. But I tell you, with Filipino people uniting with the government and collectively deciding to collect ourselves and stand as a nation and as a people, that situation may, that sometimes seem to be desperate, I believe it is still far from being hopeless. Ang taong bayan na nagkakaisa kasama sa pamahalaang nagbabago upang magsumikap tayo sa kapayapaan at pagtulong-tulong natapusin ang scourge and evil 
of destruction brought about by the CPP, NPA, and the EPTOR country. Na hindi tayo nag-improve at nag-develop dahil sa buong, buong mundo tayo na lang ang may communist armed insurgency na buhay pa. The rest sa libro na lang ito nababasa. The people must unite with the government and the government must lead the people through good governance so that whole of nation approach and whole of government participation can become effective instruments for our national security approach to decisively defeat the evils and terrorism brought about by the CPP, NPA, and the Maraming salamat po. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. I am open for interaction. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey Salis, for that uh, very detailed and uh, informative discussion. And uh, we will see you later during the open forum as we have already received questions for uh, your topic. Let us proceed with our topic three, which is a critical analysis on uh, the National Task Force and Local Communist Armed Conflict. So uh, before, before this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I uh, also have the honor to uh, introduce uh, our two resource speakers uh, who uh, will be talking on um, the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict. Let me introduce our first resource speaker for this. And uh, she is the uh, Assistant Secretary Rania C. Korokoto, the Assistant Director General of uh, the Special Concerns uh, Office of the National Security Council Secretariat. Prior to her current designation, she served as a director of uh, the Strategic Studies Branch Policy and the Strategic Studies Office of the National Security uh, Council Secretariat. Also, before joining the NSC, Rania was uh, the Chief of Research and Development Management Division of uh, the National Research Council of the Philippines, DOST. She also served as a Director for Peace Research Center or DDR Study Center of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process and uh, was also a Director for Research and Policy Development of the Presidential Commission on Visiting Forces Agreement. She finished her Master of Arts in uh, Political Science and uh, Master of Arts in International and Area Studies at uh, the University of California, Berkeley as a Rotary International Peace Fellow. Moreover, she has a Master of Arts in Public Administration from the University of the Philippines to Man, where she also took her bachelor's degree in political science. She likewise earned an executive leadership course at the University of Queensland, Brisbane. She wrote, published, and lectured on post-conflict reconstruction, ASEAN conflict management framework, and on Mindanao peace process. She visited a number of countries as a resource person or a participant in uh, international peace building fora. In fact, she was an ambassador fellow of the Institute for Economics and Peace. Rinia and her team in the National Security Council played a significant role in the formulation and adoption of the National Plan to End Local Communist Armed Conflict and National Action Plan to Prevent and Counter Violent Extremism. Meanwhile, our second resource speaker for the third topic is Mr. Dan Dustin Kakanindin. He currently serves as a Project Evaluation Officer of the Special Concerns Office National Security Council. Is also a regular resource speaker for the Law Enforcement and Public Safety Academy. Mr. Kakanindin finished his Bachelor of Arts in Asian Studies at the University of Santo Tomas, Manila, and uh, took his Bachelor of Laws at the San Beda College of Law. He finished his uh, Master's in Strategic Studies from the Rajaratnam School of International Studies in Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. It is home to one of the world's leading graduate schools and think tanks. As a career research analyst, he spent years serving in the public sector. 
He served as the chief researcher and writer or editor for the Graduate School of the Development Academy of the Philippines. He also worked part-time at uh, the RSIS and uh, the International Center for, or NTU's security think tank, International Center for Political Violence and Terrorism Research. His extensive corporate experience includes working as a business strategy and analytics specialist for PLDT, senior analyst both for Black Pearl Intel and the risk and crisis management service provider, Global Rescue. Over the years, Mr. Kakanindin has acquired in-depth insight and perspective on the local, regional, and global security environment at a strategic, operational, and tactical levels. Mr. Kakanindin is also a writer who wrote and edited contributions to the Public Management Handbook, the DARP Perspective and the International Development and Security Review, Volume 1. Ladies and gentlemen, may we uh, welcome our first resource speaker, Asek Rinya C. Kurakoto. So, Dean Jamaica Bumidang, members of the faculty and administrators of the Department of Political Science, the students of Ifogao State University, guests, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon. It is with great pleasure that we present the good works of the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or intif LCAC. Our presentation consists of two parts. First part is a lecture presentation on Executive Order Number 70, the policy framework of the intif LCAC stated in the National Plan LCAC and the flagship program of the INTF, which is the Barangay Development Program. Second part is the assessment on ELCA. Part one will be delivered by Dustin, our senior researcher and analyst on ELCA and related the subject matters. Part two will be done by me. Dustin, please proceed. Uh, Ma'am, I, I think Mr. Lestin is in, on mute. He's on mute. Hello. Can yes, you hear me now? we can hear you. We all can right. see you now. All right, all right. Again, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. On December 4, 2018, the president signed Executive Order No. 7, which created LCAC's National Task Force for the purpose of driving the whole of nation campaign towards attaining inclusive and sustainable peace. Built on good governance and inclusivity and the promotion of peace and development, this campaign seeks to attain the following strategic outcomes. First would be that the root causes of the insurgency are addressed Second, that resilient communities are established. On January 6th of last year, President Duterte approved the Barangay Development Program, which consists mainly of projects and activities under the Retooled Community Support Program or RCSP. Incidentally, this RCSP is a convergent mechanism for local governments, which directed them to identify issues and the much needed uh, government interventions at the barangay levels. 
been known to most of you, uh, the core of the administration's intentions has been its socioeconomic pursuits. Nakita natin to sa intensified land reform, free irrigation, free tertiary education, universal health care, and improved Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino program or for peace. In turn, it was a blessing that these programs had a direct impact on the issues commonly exploited by the communist terrorists or the CTPNPA. Either they use this as fuel in their recruitment uh, intentions or their uh, plans to lodge criticisms and discredit any sitting administration in our country. To sustain our momentum, the government through LCAC embarked on a barangay development program to essentially deny the CPP-NPA from regaining or remaining in their strongholds in our own communities. The BDP brings much needed and much awaited economic boost in conflicted, geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. Simply put, the BDP as a program is a peace building and conflict transformational mechanism specifically intended for barangays that have been cleared of the influence and control of the CPP NPA. On your screens, these are the five major programs that are being undertaken or being pursued under the BDP. BDP, BDP. Farm to market roads, school buildings, sanitation and water systems, rural electrification, as well as the establishment, the establishment of health stations. Meanwhile, listed here are the other projects which may complement a uh, program. They could, there could be, you could pursue housing, reconstruction, rehabilitation, and repair projects. And please focus your attention on COVID-19. No? Uh, I think uh, the LCAC mechanism will be a perfect uh, tool to use in our anti-COVID-19 campaigns for vaccination and immunization purposes. As a background, in 2020, NTF LCAC requested through the DBM funds amounting to 32.72 billion pesos to cover the BDP packages for 2020, 2021. The amount is intended for 822 barangays cleared from the period of 2016 to 2019. However, only 16.4 billion of the funds were secured, thereby prioritizing only those 822. Had it not been for the COVID-19 pandemic, the BDP program could have funded projects for the barangays cleared in 2020. Shown here is the breakdown of the total cost for the 2,386 projects spread across 40 provinces, 198 municipalities, and the 822 barangays. That total amount incidentally of 16.44 billion is regarded as a subsidy to the local government units as support to the BDP projects as indicated in the General Appropriations Act for the fiscal year to 2021. Through, the, through, through to the whole of nation concept or character of the BDP, it has these following features. The main theme in this slide is collaboration and cooperation. What I'm really, or what we are really trying to emphasize here is that everybody plays an important role and are invested in the process, particularly on the BDP. Currently, the full implementation of the Barangay Development Program is in full swing. It is well underway and is fully compliant to the DBM issued regulations and guidelines. Currently, pre preparations are being undertaken in line for the implementation of the BDB programs for next year, 2022. Indeed, there are many development projects and activities that have been pursued and undertaken successfully and consistently under the LCAC program. And if you ask me, Dustin, well, why focus on BDP? It is simply because we hardly hear about the development and the peace development uh, agenda of the government. 
Uh, you may have heard the National Security Advisor speak about the BDP as LCAC's flagship program, and rightfully and just justifiably so. The BDP is a perfect microchasm of the LCAC program and is wholly representative of its principles, intents, and purposes. Truly po, the encouraging results brought about by the LCAC is being felt more and more at the local levels. Bottom line, the LCAC has credibly become an important facet in this government's peace and development agenda. And as we speak, continues to do wonders for our Filipino communities. This is the least talked about or discussed and often overlooked aspect of the LCAC program, its peace and development character. While the detractors, cynics, skeptics tend to downplay and ignore this matter, it is probably upon us to put this front and center in the national discourse and national consciousness. For further assessment on the program, I'm going to pass this along to ADG Renya Corocoto. Thank you, Dustin. Now moving on to assessing how effective the program is. We must first look at how LCAC performed in relation to its mandate according to EO 70. These are first, to formulate and implement a whole of nation approach. Second, to ensure interagency convergence in the implementation of the framework in conflict affected and vulnerable areas. And third, to organize ad hoc interagency and multi-sectoral clusters and councils at all levels. From our perspective, and based on how LCAC has progressed in the past years, along with the evidences of its efforts, it has checked on all boxes. From the perspective of program management, the following critical questions are usually asked. First, where is the program currently? Our answer is, we managed to tackle this in reference to the status of the LCAC and its program, particularly the BDP. The second and third questions are, where does the program intend to go? How does it plan to reach that point? As indicated earlier, the LCAC is clear on both fronts that the desired outcomes are for the root causes of insurgency to be addressed and the establishment of resilient communities. The BDP is the mechanism to transform and empower communities to become progressive, peaceful, and resilient because first, the programs and projects comprising the BDP shall are being implemented under the leadership and direct supervision of the local chief executive and the target LGUs in the spirit of good governance. The intef LCAC merely serves to coordinate and orchestrate the nationwide implementation of BDP. The programs and projects included in the BDP were identified through community-based multi-sectoral dialogue, problem-solving, and conflict resolution processes through which the primary and secondary issues or root causes of armed conflict in the barangays were determined, the BDP programs and projects are intended to address these issues which were surfaced by the community themselves. National government support and interagency convergence are ensured through the operations of the regional and local task forces which harness the strength of the regional and local development councils and peace and order councils. The final question then is, how do we know that the program is on the right track? We believe that the answer to this is more no ones. We can definitely find quantitative and qualitative ways to provide an answer, but surely for the short and medium term, LCAC must stay the course and ensure the full implementation of its programs, projects, and activities. The immediate goals are attached to how communities are positively responding to LCAC programs and resisting the emptiness and incursions of the CPP and PE. More importantly, how LCAC, with the support of the stakeholders, are able to sustain it. On the part of the National Task Force, it must ensure that BDP contributes to the broader strategic framework of EO70 as presented in the National Plan LCAP. 
ideally, a BDP results chain framework must be drawn up by this NTF. The chain framework result chain framework should clearly establish the processes that link a BDP project to the expected outcome indicated in the National Plan ELCA, namely resilient communities development. For the long term, ELCA, along with the LGUs and other stakeholders, must jointly exhibit stick-to-itiveness and commitment to sustain ELCA successes through good governance and unprecedented cooperation. There is no way to get around the idea that for LCAC, it is a matter of attrition, longevity, sustainability, and consistency. Ultimately, only time will tell, and hopefully, history will decide in our country's favor. This ends our presentation. Thank you very much, Ifugao State University, for this opportunity to share our insights, our accomplishments, and our hope for the NTF LCAC. Thank you to our uh, two resource uh, speakers uh, for uh, that uh, presentation. And uh, let us proceed with uh, the open forum. We have uh, questions. Um, let me go to the first question. By the way, our resource speakers can add or supplement answers to uh, the questions that we have. Do we have a hope to end local armed conflicts through the task force created by the government when it's almost 60 years that the government cannot eradicate the presence of CPP and PA? So who among our three speakers would like to address this question? Or yeah, may, may I go, go ahead? With... Uh, may I go ahead, uh, Ms. Moderator, so that... Uh... Uh, as a and that then the, the, the other uh, presenter can also have their views. Yes, of course, sir. we can. Uh, as former rebel, former cadre operative of the CPP, NPA, and DF, I believe the government right now, with the creation of the National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict, is in the correct perspective and the proper framework that shall address the CPP, NPA, and DF in a holistic and comprehensive manner that has never been done before by any other governments. Uh, some other attempts earlier on to have a whole of nation approach uh, had only been academic or reduced or limited to theoretical approach. Never seen before uh, kami na mga former cadre na may ganitong comprehensive participation ang mga line agencies and civilian agencies of the government at uh, out of the 12 clusters uh, created as component operational framework of the National Task Force, isang cluster lang po ang pinamumunuan dyan ng uh, state security forces, uh, the armed forces and the PNP, yung pledge cluster, yung peace, law enforcement, and development security cluster. The rest are civilian-led. And uh, ang namumuno nitong mga clusters na ito ay mga uh, cabinet secretary and mga heads at mga delegates nila. At ang mga cabinet secretaries representing the president, led by Secretary Esperon, ay uh, mga civilian ito na nakikipag-ugnayan sa mga local government units. The singular factor at napakalaking gap kung bakit hindi natin natugunan ang uh, problema sa CPP, NPA, and DF. Kasi for the last five decades, Narilegate lang sa ang responsibility sa pagsubpo uh, at pagsupil sa CPP, NPA, and DEF sa kamay ng uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines, seconded by uh, the Philippine National Police. And alam natin that the CPP, NPA problem or any insurgency problem for that matter, it is a complex socio-economic political problem that is combining both mili political military approach and other approaches that combine as well political warfare, legal offensive operations, alliances, propaganda, international work, which are way beyond the, the capability and discipline of the armed forces alone, if kung sila lang ang haharap dito. 
So kaya nga, kahit mag-52 years na siya at mag-53 years na, ngayon pa lang natin nakikita na ito pa lang ang tamang approach. Whole of government approach at whole of nation approach combined together as the framework mission grounded on good governance. Yun po ang kanyang tungtungan, yun po ang platform. At ang good governance na yan ang mag-trigger at mag-propel ng dynamics of a whole of government participation and whole of nation approach upang doon po ang direksyon ay maipatupad ang tinatawag na good governance. The Barangay Development Program is an expressed uh, component of good governance. Kasi apat ang kategorya ng good governance as the fulcrum center ng operational mission framework ng buong National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict. It is not abstract but rather a concrete expression ng tamang pamamanakad. Ang good governance ay nakasandig sa patapatupad ng una, anti-corruption program. Ang gobyerno ay dapat hindi bulok at hindi kurakot so that it can gain the trust and support of the people and mapangangalagaan natin ang pondo ng bayan. Ang bulok at uh, kurakot na gobyerno is a recruiter para sa mga CPP, NPA, NDF. And that is the flagship program of the President to read out corruption in the system of the bureaucracy. It may not be perfect, but that is the correct direction. So that is the one requirement of good governance in the ntf LCAP framework foundation, which is good governance. Number two, good governance requires accountability. Ang lahat ng mga nasa gobyerno at mga ahensya at sangay ng gobyerno at may mga katungkulan sa gobyerno shall exercise accountability at all levels of their function. Hindi abusado, hindi perwisyo. Accountable governance. So that we will have the respect and trust and confidence in the people for them to join and support any program that we develop uh, at interventions among them. Number three, bringer of social development and social services. Yan pong ang layunin ng Barangay Development Program is to trigger ang pagkakaroon uh, ng capability for development and security sa mga liblib na mga lugar at buok na dating pinog pinopugaran, binubulabog at ginugulo ng CPP, NPA, NDF, lalo na sa mga lugar na malakas ang kanilang dating pagkilo sa Masbate, sa Bicol, sa Samar, sa Negros, and more, many parts of Mindanao, northeastern and north central Mindanao. With the Barangay Development Program, it can now trigger a, uh, an effect na ang iba pang sangay ng ahensya at local government will be encouraged na ituloy-tuloy ang uh, social development and social services na gawain ng gobyerno so that ma-eliminate uh, ang influence and ang threat ng CPP, NPA, and DEP sa pagbubuo nila ng radical mass-based operations nila to topple down the government by way of armed violence and radicalization. And ang panghuli sa good governance po ay ang pagkakaroon ng role ng government as the equalizer for the people. Yung usapin ng lupa, the land conflict, and all issues related to the basic and fundamental issues related to the question of social inequities, it shall be the government that shall bring justice, balance, and equality into the needs of the people at hindi kailangang may CPP, NPA, NDF. For the last 50 years, yan po ang mga vacuum at mga gap ng government na pilit na natin ngayong tinutugunan through the ntf -LCAP. So hindi po hungkag at hindi po academic discussion ang whole of nation approach at ang whole of government approach. Nakatungtong po ito sa konkretong usapin at konkretong programa ng pagpapatupad ng good governance. By that alone, naniniwala kami na magtatagumpay tayo. If not completely today, under the term of the President, but we are on the right track and on the right direction, we shall become victorious over the CPP and PAN. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salis. We also hear an answer from the ASIC uh, Kurakato or uh, Mr. Kakanendin. The question was, uh, do we still have hope to end local armed conflicts through uh, the task force? Uh, in my in my peace work, uh, the, in the last, uh, I would say, 25 years, uh, one thing I learned is that it is dangerous for a people, for a community to lose hope. Hope is something that we have to have in order to have a good and bright future, you know. 
is something that will drive us to achieve something. Yes, there's hope in uh, ending a local communist armed conflict. Uh, it is not something abstract on my part. It is not something uh, theoretical on my part. I am seeing it in my own hometown, in my own province. I'm from Northern Samar. I'm from Northern Samar. I'm from Samar Island. And uh, you know, Samar, it is almost in the news as, uh, regarding ambushes of the or uh, encounters between military, police, and the CPP in pain. Uh, there is hope because one, the uh, 11 guerrilla fronts in the Samar Island in uh, before the intif LCAC was established is down to four guerrilla fronts. And uh, the people there in Samar believe that by 2022, this guerrilla fronts will be eliminated. But more importantly, in my experience is I have seen the transformation of the local government executives and the government agencies in my region, in my province. Their transformation to become more effective more hardworking to believe in peace and development as something that is attainable. Uh, maybe in um, the months to come, we will have uh, case studies to concretely present to the country how intf -LCAC has transformed people, communities, yes, we can end local communist armed conflict because the mechanism, the policy framework we have now, it is something that is learned from the past years. We are not saying that what the administrations before have done are wrong, but uh, we would say that this government now, the set of leaders now have learned from the past uh, so that what we do in NTF Elka is something that is uh, not only knowledge, but also wisdom. Wisdom meaning something that we have developed out of profound way. Yes, again, I know that one that asked question is student. Yes, there is hope. And that hope is not only through military means to defeat armed conflict, but also as our speakers have been saying starting this morning, it is about, it is true, good governance. Good governance that is happening from the top to local level and among our people. But we had to play a key role on that. We ordinary people, you students, academics have to play a role. And that is something that we keep on asking from you to, to be part of our endeavor. Magtulungan tayo, pagkaisa tayo. Kasi dyan sa pagtutulungan na yan, may pag-asa. Thank you. Dustin, please share your insight. Uh, thank you po, ma'am. Uh, napakaganda po ng perspective na binigay ni Ka Eric at ni Ma'am Remya. No? Uh, they were both uh, from a different side na pareho namang tama. Para sagutin ko yan, sa akin lang, para sa sarili ko, I'm not working on hope right now. It's a belief that we are winning and we will win. Kung dadaling ko to sa perspektibo ng LCAC, ang sa mga insurgencies kasi, whether dito o sa ibang bansa, it's always a matter of why. Why, why may insurgency? Why nag a ang mga ganitong grupo? At itong LCAC ang nakita natin solusyon, eh, we will take away that why from them. Eh. Uh, we will give what the people need, what the people want. We will be present. We will be consistent. No? At pagka na nakuha na natin yung wife from them, the hope is na matutuyuan na sila ng mga pagkukuha na ng lakas. No? So yes, we don't only have hope, but we expect winning it. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Asik and uh, Mr. Takanindain for uh, those uh, encouraging answers. Uh, so there's still hope 
Okay. Sir Raleigh, do we have, uh, uh, yeah, can we proceed with the second uh, question there? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, here is a question from Ms. May Galangi of St. Mary's University. If CPP was only for power and not for peace, why were they legalized in the first place, allowing them to compete openly in the political, economic, or in the social arena? And was it right to say that former President Ramos had only offered a bandage solution to the communist insurgencies here in the Philippines when he allowed CPP to be legalized in the country under his administration? Yeah. Uh, may I uh, go ahead again, please, uh, Ms. Moderator? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Uh, the effect of the repeal of anti-subversion law in 1992, which is the Republic Act 1700, in effect, uh, it made or opened up the possibility and the acceptance of the CPP and even the NDF to become legal, quote unquote, if they are not going to bring their arms into the open. Because before, when there was the anti-subversion law, or the Republic Act 1700, mere membership into the CPP, NPA, and even into the NDF as underground organization, attempting to overthrow the government by the use of arms and violence. Membership alone can be a crime already and punishable under the revised penal code, as well as under the special law on uh, anti-subversion law. However, on my direct experience and participation with the CPP and PA and there, even with the repeal of Republic Act 1700 in 1992, or the anti-subversion law under uh, President Ramos, the CPP and PA and DF did not go above ground. They remained underground, meaning they retained their NPA. May armado pa rin sila. Hindi nila binitawan ang kanilang general political line that is to overthrow the government by way of armed violence supported by legal parliamentary operations and political activities and legal activities. But primarily, they still have the armed group, the NPA. And hindi naman CPP ang nag-participate sa election. They created front organizations to cover up for them, to serve as their masquerade, to serve as their deception instrument. Ito yung uh, makabayan party list ngayon. Uh, I am very privy about that because ang unang binuo namin ay ang Pagkatapos na bumagsak ang administrasyon ni Pangulong Estrada, riding high on the popularity of the popular protest movement led by Bagong Aliansang Makabayan, we created Bayan Muna as the organization for party list na sasama sa electoral uh, party list system operations to infiltrate Congress and to infiltrate the government, not to work with the government. Malinaw po yan, ang layunin na yan. So the people are deceived. At hindi, rin to, it, it, hindi po naging strict ang government na tingnan itong mga connections ng mga party list na ito na kinreate ng CPP. At uh, hindi na lang isa. From 2001 naging isa. Isa muna tapos naging tatlo yan. Uh, nabuo ang anak pawi sa Tang Gabriela. Tumunod na binuo dyan ay ang uh, kabataan at yung act teachers. So bayan muna, anak pawis, Gabriela Women's Party, Kabataan, act teachers, may swarabang sa mga European dati, tsaka migrante party list. And they attempted to add three more last 2019 elections. Pero hindi natuloy. What's my point? The CPP, NPA, and the F, though they did not avail openly to become legal as CPP per se and NPA without arms and NDF, but they operated clandestinely from behind, embedded in the front organizations na sila din ang gumawa. At para mapagtakpan ito, tinatakot nila ang, ang mamamalaya, ang publiko, ang taong bayan, they, and even the government, na sinasabi nila na kapag naibubunyag sila, red tagging ang ginagawa. No, that is not red tagging. That is really the nature of duplicity na ginagawa nila, na iniikutan nila ang batas, binubutas nila ang batas, at ginagamit nila ang batas to their advantage, to the point that they already become so adept and expert to infiltrate the government using our own legal system and democratic institutions and spaces. So yun pong nangyari. And I think uh, marami pong bagay na dapat uh, baguhin at i-adjust sa batas natin. If the government right now 
cannot be able to bring back another so anti-subversion law. Uh, may anti-terrorism act naman tayo na pending for constitutional validation until now. Uh, may iba pang pamamaraan. Like for example, requirements sa uh, election filing of candidacy sa mga party list and other political parties na dapat may public and outright denunciation of acts of terrorism and those who promote terrorism and acts of violence and those who attempt to overthrow the government, particularly those organizations like CPP, NPA, NDF. Dapat mayroong uh, requirement yan sa pagsasagawa ng filing of candidacy na dapat pipirma ka ng declaration na yan as your covenant to the people and to the electoral process na hindi mo gagamitin ito para mag-promote ng violent uh, and extreme radical uh, political ideology hiding behind dito sa mga maskara ng party list operations. Kaya complicated ang uh, operations ng CPP, NPA, NDF that we need really to educate both the people and even our own government officials. At yun po ang role naming mga former rebels and former cadres to come out in the open and bring into public awareness this kind of deceitful, manipulative, and scheming operations of how the CPP, NPA, and NDF can be able to infiltrate in the urban areas, including our government institutions and even our electoral processes. That is a task part uh, in the mission framework of ntf LCAP, where we are going to strengthen bureaucracy and to become resilient from infiltration by uh, putting in place legal mechanisms that will deny the CPP, NPA, and NDF from further exploiting and using this uh, platform for their infiltration operations of the bureaucracy. That is a challenge right now, but I think the government and the people are now getting uh, understanding and uh, perspective about the modus operandi dahil nga sa mga pagbubunyag na ito na inalalantad. Kaya ang only defense na lang nila is to hide behind sa claim nila na nire-red tag sila. Kaya delikado ang buhay nila. That is not true. Red tagging is a concoction and a defense mechanism created by the CPP themselves for them to be able to circumvent the law and exploit our legal system to be able to effectively go on with their infiltration operations. Uh, Asek, do you have a uh, supplement or uh, yes, Justin? Yes. As I said earlier, um, the intif LCAC is a product of wisdom. What we have learned in the past years in dealing with the CPP and PA. So my opinion on uh, the legalization of the CPP and PA under Ramos administration is uh, the, 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 the former president did it with good intention, out of goodwill. Uh, we, we have to remember that uh, the, the Ramos administration is also the decade of global peace declared by the UN. So uh, the Philippine policies, like any governments of member of United Nations, also goes with international norm. So that is my judgment. My judgment is like what I learned from university. We had to judge an idea, an action based on its proper historical context. Uh, yung pananaw natin ngayon ay iba sa pananaw nila noon. Ang kanilang experience noon ay hindi katulad ng experience natin ngayon. Kaya hindi madaling sabihin na mali sila noon sa administrasyon na yan at tama tayo ngayon. Ang masasabi ko ay natuto tayo sa mga nakarang administrasyon, sa, sa mga nakaraang polisiya. In the same way na hopeful tayo that what we are doing now is also right. And in the years to come, our people, the Filipinos, will, will also judge us if we have done right. Um, thank you po, ma'am. Uh, isa lang po yung masasabi ko. Maganda po na dinala ni Ma'am Renya ang usapin sa something that is very uh, madali i-appreciate at uh, nasa academic rin na perspective. 
Kaya dudugtungan ko na lang din po. No? If you want to, uh, like for example, analyze or try to interpret a particular policy, it always draws me back to the Man, State, and War by Kenneth Waltz. Uh, kung gusto natin i-explain but sa panahon ni ganito ay ganito nangyari, we look at yung period na yun na separate from how we perceive it right now. I guess uh, yun ang pinakabadaling way to appreciate and really uh, explain how policy choices were done a certain way as opposed to kung different siya sa panahon ng ngayon. And sa pangalawang sagot ko po ay Ang CBP NPA po, kanina po in-explain ni Kai Eric, no? uh, ang galawa po niyan ay parang sindikato na rin. And so, they take advantage of certain loopholes and uh, freedoms that have been granted in our democracies. No? They have learned to take advantage of that. And so, they are still here. And uh, I believe po na the, once na na-expose na sa mga tao sa, sa dealings nila na that, are, that are criminal, they're terroristic. Lalo, lalo po silang manghihina, I guess. And uh, let's just view them as a, acting as an organized crime unit. Or, uh, malinis sila sa ibabaw, pero nasa ilalim yung video. Thank you for those answers. So we still have uh, 26 minutes for uh, our uh, open forum. We have a question from uh, a faculty member of the College of Arts and Sciences. Entrepreneurship plays a vital role in the economic growth of our nation. However, some of the entrepreneurs investors are afraid to venture or expand their business activities in other places due to uh, peace and order issues, aside from being taxed doubly. In this new normal, what support does the government extend to protect our local entrepreneurs from being harassed, double taxed, or from incurring losses due to destruction of business properties? So maybe we have answers from... I think uh, uh, we should be the one to answer it. Uh, we have the anti-terrorism law that is now the protection of our people from um, terroristic acts like extortion, uh, you know, harassment, like burning of the factories, their equipment, or those people engaged in, uh, in the countryside. Uh, we have the anti-terror law. So uh, our government now has a, a tool but uh, mind you, the ATA is not only about uh, you know, the kinetic uh, approach of uh, stopping terrorist acts. The anti-terrorism law has also provisions providing for uh, development, de-radicalization, and all those development, uh, peace, and security component that must be done by the government so that the rural communities will be developed. Yes, we agree. We, yes, we agree to the sentiments of our business sector that indeed insurgency, terrorism has negative impact on countryside development. In fact, that is basically what the Institute for Economics and Peace in their Global Terrorism Index is trying to convey to us that terrorism has economic value, that uh, a country it is not something that is not alien to us. It is very, very visible, common to our experiences. Ang isang bansa, may isang probinsya na maraming NPA, na maraming nangyaring terrorist attacks, ay mababa din ang development. Katulad halimbawa, siguro sa Afghanistan, di ba? Palaging may terrorist attacks. So, yun kalang investment din ay hindi mataas. Siguro, not only siguro, but a sure reason also that uh, economic activities like Silan, Sulu, uh, Hamar Island, the three provinces, are not that high. They are not developing fast enough compared to other provinces because of the presence of insurgents, 
pre presence of terrorist groups. Yes, there is economic value of peace. Terrorism and insurgency deters development. Okay. Uh, Miss moderator, may I just give uh, my view, my brief re uh, rejoinder on that? Go ahead, sir. Okay. If there is one important factor that the security sector must focus now, <laughs> it should be on the defeat, constriction, isolation, and total collapse of the New People's Army. The Communist Party of the Philippines without an NPA will be just another political party. That, that believes in an ideology of Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism. The balance of terror, the threat of terror on the part of the CPP comes from their NPA. Yan dapat ang pagsumikapan ng ating armed forces at ng Philippine National Police. There should be a uh, focus effort on the campaign para labanan, sugpuin, at uh, papanagutin ang mga extortion unit ng NPA. At uh, kausapin dapat ito mga malalaking kumpanya at mga negosyante at mga local and uh, mga multinational business, i-organize dapat sila ng government so that they become part of the whole of nation approach to deny funding and resources to the enemy. And the funding and capability to generate resources of the CPP comes from the presence of their NPA. Kaya dapat tuloy-tuloy na kinoconstrict, ina-isolate ang NPA. So the single factor that can crumble the CPP and make them uh, become irrelevant organizationally aside from neutralizing legally and otherwise their cadres and their operatives as their leaders, we have also to crumble their NPA. At yun ay uh, sentrong requirement para magprosper ang entrepreneurship, local entrepreneurship, and other business and investment. Kasi kahit anong gawin ng government na pag pagsasagawa ng kalsada, irigasyon at mga libro at mga pagdadala ng gamot, Kung nandyan pa rin ang armadong unit ng mga NPA, even if they are not big enough to overthrow the government, but capable enough to inflict damage, harass people and kill civilians and intimidate business, the balance of terrorism uh, on their part can pressure the business sector na talagang magbayad pa rin ng extortion money and the failure to compel law enforcement on them and uh, the weakness of the government na durugin ang kanilang hukbo sa matagal na panahon. Ito kasi ang kanyang primary political military arm pagdating sa kanayunan ng NPA. We have akbayan na naniniwala din sa sosyalismo, pandayan, bisig at iba pa mga grupo, pero wala silang NPA. Yan ang grupo ni Risa Honteberos. Uh, there are also groups na walang NPA pero naniniwala din sa mga ilang nuances of uh, Marxist framework ng mga pagtingin. Yung grupo ng PDSP nila, Bert Gonzalez, nila late Padre Intingan, wala silang NPA. Kaya hindi sila nakaka-apekto uh, ng malaki sa security and peace and development ng ating bayan. Even if they are sometimes critical to the policies and programs of the government. Malinaw po yun na dapat mag-focus ang security sector, ang pledge cluster both sa law enforcement at pagdurog sa NPA. At pag-reduce ng kanilang terroristic capability to inflict harm and damage, harass and intimidate people and business sectors. And by the way, gusto ko lang siyang i-emphasize na kung nagkaroon man ng seemingly kapayapaan sa panahon ni Pangulong Ramos, it's because rectification movement yan sa loob ng CPP. At sa loob ng anima hanggang walong taon, iniwasan talaga namin sa CPP and PND na maglunsad ng mga malalaking pakikidigmang guerrilla until the year 2000, kung saan kami nakarecover. Because we were damaged internally by internal weaknesses and errors na naganap mula 1983 hanggang 1991. So the period of that was not solely about Ramos' policy on peace, but rather the internal weakness of the CPP, NPA, NDF organizationally dahil nga may problema siya. Pinatay niya ang mahigit 3,000 na kanyang mga tauhan at mga leader at nagkaroon siya ng muntik na siyang mag-collapse. Nag-split ang mga RPA, ABB, kaya hindi siya makabuelo. But after eight years, nakabuelo siya muli at nakarecover dahil sa peace talks sa maling framework. Umasok tayo sa maling framework na yon at coming from us na mga direktang kumilo sa CPP, NPA, NDF, kami po ay ginamit namin ng peace talks na yon sa panahon ni Ramos 
para makapag-recover, makapag-regain ng aming organisasyon at muli po kaming uh, lumakas sa organisasyon at makapagbuo ng mga NPA uh, through that framework, yung Hague Declaration Framework. Kung kaya kailangan natin maintindihan na ang wisdom na yan na sinasabi natin mula doon sa kasaysayan, it should be put into the proper use and perspective ng pag-iral ng lipunan at mga factors ng social movements kung saan malinaw po na hindi naintindihan masyado ng government ang CPP, NPA, NDF sa matagal na panahon kaya kapos at kulang ang kanyang mga policies and programs kaya ngayon lang po ito nagkaroon ng ganito mga paglilinaw sa peace framework understanding analysis na may mga pagkukulang pala tayo sa framework on how we treat the peace talks and the peace process during the time na mga previous administration. At walang dapat ikahiya dyan, dapat tanggapin natin yan na process of learning yan. Unless uh, we want to cling to that at hindi natin halawan ng leksyon, ay eh baka pag hindi si Pangulong Duterte ang umupo at itulak muli ang Hague Declaration Framework, ay balik tayo sa square one kung saan dinidribble-dribble tayo ng CPP, NP, NDF dahil hindi naman kapayapaan ang totoong layunin ng CPP, NP, NDF ay kapangyarihan, poder at pagpapabagsak sa gobyerno, hindi kapayapaan. Thank you po for allowing me to have a rejoinder. Sir Rodney, our next question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rizalis. Uh, thank you, ma'am. We have here a question from Sir Jimmy Uy. Uh, ano po ang pinakamainam na pamamaraan para matigil ang pagkakatatag, pagda uh, pagdami ng mga samahang ang terorismo katulad na lamang ng CPP, NPA, Abu Sayyaf, at saka po yung mga binabanggit kanina na mga uh, nasa political arena as well. Mga party list movements. Opo, may I go ahead first please. Uh, we cannot prohibit or disallow forming associations and groups dahil nasa batas yan for as long as hindi sila nag-aarmas at wala silang uh, outright and open declaration na mag-aarma sila para pabagsakin ng gobyerno under the Bill of Rights allowed po yung pagbubuo ng mga organizations. However, we have to be more discerning and cautious. Maingat po tayo at intindihin natin uh, coming from the testimonies of former rebels and former cadres na ito rin po ang weakness ng ating batas. Dito sila pumapasok para makapag-organize sila at makapagpunwari. And the government can only do is to expose and uh, make the people aware na may ganito palang kalakaran at nangyayari. At yan ang mga isa sa gawain ng NTFLK. At yan ay paglalantad at pagbubunyag upang magkaroon ng mataas na uh, social awareness and political understanding ang mamamayan uh, so that ang recruitment and radicalization and indoctrination and process of infiltration ng CPP, NPA, NDF sa iba't ibang mga sektor will now be reduced ang kanilang influence dahil alam ng tao ang kanilang modus operandi, ang packaging at ang approach nila. However, dito sa mga front organizations na identified na natin at alam natin na ito ay dahil nga sa uh, karanasan, aktual na pangyayari at mga doktrina nila, iilan lang naman ito ay eh, mga 24 or 25 front organizations under bagong aliansang makabaya and other affiliate organizations. Mayroon pong underground components sa loob nito na binubuo ng mga members ng NDF na sumusuporta sa armadong pagkilos at nagde-deploy para sa NPA, tumutulong sa NPA at mayroong mga Communist Party operatives kagaya ng mga anim na party list nila ngayon na representante sa loob ng Kongreso. These are the components of the front organizations na ginagamit ng CPP, NPA, NDF. Itong underground component will be targeted for law enforcement and legal offensive operations including ang paggamit nila ng mga peke na NGO para ilusot ang mga pondo mula sa kanilang mga funding partners at international operations. It warrants and necessitates strong law enforcement, decisive legal operations, and stronger na will ng gobyerno na gamitin ang batas uh, laban sa kanila uh, sa tamang pamamaraan na hindi natin sila papayagan na sila ang nakaka-infiltrate at nakakagamit ng mga batas natin. We will not prohibit or disallow the fundamental rights na magkaroon ng mga association, but we will expose itong mga gumagamit ng mga constitutional provisions na ito upang makapagtago ng kanilang front organization and we must hit hard 
on the underground component of these front organizations na alam naman ito ng gobyerno dahil ang security sector ay mayroon na mga knowledge and experience about this. Thank you po. Asek? Do we have... Um, what was the question again? Sir Ali, the question? Sir Ali, may we hear the question again? Oh, sorry. It was addressed. It was specific, specifically addressed to uh, uh, Mr. Salis. So uh, let us proceed with uh, the next uh, question, and uh, maybe Asa can go ahead and uh, answer, or firstly answer the question. How would you assess the current situation of the CPP and PA in terms of their influence and power? Has their influence significantly weakened? Or are they still going strong and can still thrive for another 50 years? They are significantly weakened. That is for sure. Weakened uh, on the military strength. As I uh, gave you an example before about summer, our armed forces in the uh, summer island is very optimistic that they can eliminate all guerrilla fronts come 2022. They are weakened because the business sector have stopped, maybe not totally, but almost or majority have stopped giving them funds. Our works in an international level is gaining ground. Uh, we have convinced many governments, non-government organizations abroad of the works of the CPP and PA, and uh, we believe that the majority of them have stopped giving them the CPP and PA funds. Also, all of the government is working with us in this effort the Department of Education and the Commission on Higher Education where recruitments of new combatants are happening um, because of our youth students and even senior high schools are recruiting uh, combatants in PACE are recruiting. Even the Abu Sayyaf are doing the same to our children. We have convinced them through our engagement information campaign about uh, the problem of radicalization in schools and our youths and even in social media. Yes, uh, we are positive that the CPPNP have greatly weakened. And we are positive that they cannot reach the same level of war arm struggle with us uh, in the years to come. Maybe next year, we will have a significant achievement of defeating them. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, we still have nine minutes. So, Rally, what's our uh, next question? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is a question from Caleb Ayahaw from Ifuga State University, Political Science. Now, he noticed that uh, just recently or in the recent months, we have uh, PNP anti-communism digital pub mats uh, on social media as well as printed tarpaulins posted. Uh, no? And these were poorly made, which were ripped countless criticisms. Uh, can we have uh, your point or your opinion on this one, on this poorly made digital pub mats? 
Dustin will answer that because uh, he's working on a, on a study or a research related to the use of social media and internet in radicalization and recruitment of our students and youths. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sir Dustin. Uh, thank you for that, Paul, ma'am. Uh, can I ask back the question again? How is it, what kind of criticism are we talking about here? Uh, I think it's on uh, how these uh, uh, digital pub mats and uh, tarps were made because it was said here they were just poorly made. Maybe poorly, the layout or something. Poorly the made in terms of design, layout, or just a poor use of words or wrong grammar. Is that it? Maybe the words and then the layout. Sir. Uh, post on Facebook. Uh, I can't really uh, answer it na in a way na alam na alam ko yung issue. No? Pero minsan po kasi uh, na-overcome tayo ng kung may mga programa ang ating gobyerno eh, may, napaka-critical natin o barok ma mag-English o maliman ng grammar Kaso sana naman na mag-focus na lang tayo sa intent, no? Na gusto nila na ma-spread ng kaalaman at awareness sa ating lahat. Uh, give them some benefit of the doubt. Uh, uh, trust in our security systems. Trust in, trust in our military, in our police, no? That they always mean well. And uh, may mga kanya-kanya rin kasing objective ng bawat isina na kailangan nila sundin at mag-comply. Mas nasa sa atin, nung mas nakakaintindi, mas may alam sa English, mas may alam sa layout na hold back on our criticisms instead, no, be constructive. Reach out to them and help them out. Uh, yun lang ang pinaka-quickest way na masasagot ko yan. At saka pinaka-humble way na we approach things. Salamat po. Thank you, sir. Let's proceed to uh, our last question for the forum. This is from an AB political science student. I just want to ask this question to Sir Ka Eric. Within the length of your life, that's almost spent 32 years in the side of the leftist. And you mentioned that uh, the CPP and PA survived 53 years defending their ideology. What are the weaknesses that you noticed, saw, and experienced to the national or to the AFP, PNP, and uh, or the Philippine government as a whole? Why they did not solve the conflict between the state and the leftist group? Okay, thank you, Paul, for that question. If there is one important element that an, an insurgency must survive and can survive, it's because of mass space. Tao, mass base. And the CPP, NPA, NDF, they are so expert compared to the government. When it comes, not just expert, ha, but dedicated and passionate for <clears throat> implementing the most important political process in waging a social revolution or in waging a social movement or an insurgency. And that is mass base building. At ang pinaka political process sa mass base building po para sumama ang tao sa iyo, ay ang tatlong letra, AOM, Arouse, or Organize, and Mobilize. Hindi po gawain ng Armed Forces at ng Philippine National Police at ng iba pang ahensya ng gobyerno ang mag-organisa, magmulat ng mga tao, at magpakilos sa kanila. Hindi po yan natural tendency ng ating government, lalong-lalo na na sa loob ng mahigit apat na dekada, ay ang, ang armed forces lang ang kalaban ng CPP, NP, NDF. Hindi makagalaw ang CPP pagdating sa mga universidad at kolehiyo, sa mga pabrika, sa pagbubuo ng mga union. So, solong-solo nila, no matter how many NPA can be killed on the battleground, kapag tuloy-tuloy ang recruitment sa mga urban areas and town centers, sa schools, universities, and colleges, magpapatuloy pa rin po ang problema natin sa insurgency because nare-replenish po ang kanilang organizers, kadre, aktivista, propagandista. That is one weakness na hindi natin natugunan. So kaya nga sabi ko, kahit punito nila daman ang ating dadalhin ng mga kalsada at mga libro at mga irigasyon, if the people are not organized on the ground to become partners of the government for peace development and nation building, 
at hindi natin makounterorganize sa mga magsasaka, katutubo, mga manggagawa sa plantasyon at mga hasyenda, mga manggagawa sa pabrika, mga urban poor communities. Kung ang kumikilos pa rin sa kanila at nag infiltrate at nagra-radicalize, nag arouse ng kanilang mga politikal na kamulatan ay laban sa gobyerno at hindi natin nasasawata ang propaganda operations, alliance building and mass-based building operations. Hindi natin makukompleto ang ating uh, uh, tagumpay sa communist insurgency na laban na ito sa CPP and PANDF. So that's one thing. Mass-based building at ang pag-counter sa arouse, organized, mobilized political process. Number two, bagamat tinatawag natin terorista ang CPP and PANDF, hindi naman po absolute na totoo na puro kadimonyuhan ang kanilang mga programa. It's not because nanggaling ako sa kanila. Paano, ma pa paano maging kadimonyuhan ang panawagan na lansagin ang mga hasyenda at pangunahan ng gobyerno ang reformang agraryo? E eh, totoong panawagan yan sa dekadikada na. Kasi panahon pa ni King Arthur, wala na mga hasyenda ang daigdig. Panahon pa ng mga feudal system sa Europe. Pero sa Pilipinas, nandyan pa rin ang hasyenda Loisita, that's 33,000 hectares. Almost one third of uh, tarlak pagmamayari ng isang pamilya. Sa Negros, sa Masbate, ilang pamilya lang nangangamkam ng lupa. These are real issues na hindi kumo nang galing sa CPP, NPA, NDF ay mali at demonyo na. Ang pamamaraan nila ay mali, marahas, madugo, umapatay ng bubomba at uh, gumagamit ng karahasan. Hindi natin matatanggap yon. But if the government will only concentrate on superficial and mga mabababaw na mga usapin hanggang social services lang siya at hindi niya matutugunan ang mga social inequities nakatungkulan niya ng isang gobyernong nagpapatupad ng good governance, the narrative of the enemy will persist and will become a sound of justice in a call for justice para sa mga ordinaryong mamamayan. Kaya kailangan mag-intervene ang government as social justice equalizer, bringing of social justice and equalizer for the people because you don't have to be a communist-oriented government or you don't have to propose and promote socialism and communist ideology for you to heed the call ng ordinaryong mamamayan na tugunan ang kawalan sa lupa, kakulangan sa kabuhayan, lalo na ngayon na ang pandemya displaced more than 4 million workers already in the last two years or almost two years. Katungkulan at pananagutan ng gobyerno na ayusin ang pangangailangan ng higit na nakararaming mamamayan kasi yun ang inuudyukan para sa pag-oorganisa, pagmumulat nila at pagpapakilos ang mga 90% ng population natin ng mga manggagawa, maralitang lungsod, katutubo, magsasaka, manggagawang bukid, mangingisda. Ito ang mga sektor na vulnerable. Yes, tama na may social services tayo. But social inequities, the government must bring balance to that. Yun po ang mga social defects and mga social deficiencies na hindi kayang tugunan ng mga policies sa ngayon. Kung hindi kailangan, tuloy-tuloy inabaguhin yan at tugunan ng government so that the narrative of the enemies of the state like the CPP, NPA, NDF will be null, nullified and voided. Kasi ginagawa na ng gobyerno ang mga bagay na ito. Hindi ko sinasabi na hindi ginagawa, pero malaking challenge pa rin na dapat igpawan natin yan. Because the NPA will never uh, stop in their persistence attempt na mulatin at udyokan ng tao na lumaban. So nanonatili pa rin ang ganito mga social, uh, structural defects ng lipunan na dapat matugunan ng gobyerno uh, unless hanggang doon na lang tayo sa social services. Then I say pwedeng mawala ang NPA pero magkakaroon pa rin ng social movements later on na pwedeng hindi NPA ang pangalan niya. Pero dahil nga kung tutugunan ng gobyerno ang mga batayang issue fundamental ng mga defects ng lipunan na role naman talaga yan ng gobyerno para sa good governance ay sa tingin ko, lubusan nating matatapos ang insurgency problem sa Pilipinas. Hindi ko sinasabing gawing milyonaryo ang lahat ng mga magsasakat, mga katutubo, kung hindi gawing patas ang access nila na mabuhay sila ng maayos at hindi naman sila mawalan ng oportunidad na mag-survive sa makataong lipunan na yan ang direksyon ng isang good government na dapat maabot ng, na natin at yan din ang objective ng NTFLK. Yun pong sagot sa tanong ninyo, uh, ma'am. At pangatlo, hindi po pwede na hindi natin isustain ang uh, community movement at citizens movement ng mamamayan. Dahil ang center ng pagbabago sa isang lipunan na hindi gobyerno, taong bayan. 
and it must be the government that must lead and join the people para baguhin ang pananaw na dapat pala kasama sila sa pagsugpo at pagresist sa anumang infiltration attempt o radicalization na gagawin ng CPT, NPA, NPM. And for that, I rest my case. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Mr. Salis. And uh, of course, to our uh, speakers or resource speakers from uh, the Special Concerns Office. And uh, let us proceed with uh, the uh, awarding of certificates to our resource speakers. We uh, read the content of uh, the uh, Certificate of Appreciation. This Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Mr. Jeffrey K. Eric Saliz for uh, sharing his invaluable knowledge as a resource speaker during the webinar forum on State of the Nation Challenges to Philippine Security in uh, the New Normal held at Ifugao State University, Nayon Lamut Ifugao, via Zoom platform and Facebook Live on June 9, 2021. Given this ninth day of June 2021 at IFSU Lamut Ifugao, Philippines, signed Jamaica G. Bumidang, PhD, Dean, College of Arts and Sciences, signed Dina Corazon M. Likeayo, PhD, Vice President, R&D and ENT, Signed, Eva Marie Kodamon Dujon, PhD, University President. So the same certificate of appreciation is also presented to ASEC Rinya C. Kurokoto. And uh, of course, to Mr. Dan Dustin Kakanin Kakanindin. Sir Raleigh, take it away. Thank you uh, for the certificate. You're welcome, sir. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Sir Jeffrey Salis. Uh, thank you also to ASEC uh, Renya Korokoto and uh, Mr. Uh, Sir das Dan Dustin Kakanindin. Thank you for uh, being with us today. And thank you for uh, uh, giving us insights regarding the National Security Council as well as the situation of the Philippines regarding the national security. And with this, uh, I'm reminding everyone, those who are with us today via Zoom and Facebook Live, we have uh, two feedback forms for this afternoon for, for the first session under Mr. Jeffrey Sellis and then the second session under ASEC uh, Renya Korokoto and Mr. Dan Dustin Kakanindin. Please fill out those forms and uh, we also have forms from the National Security Council. They're the feedback form for the National Security Council. Please uh, also fill those forms. Uh, I give the floor to my main. Okay, so before we end this webinar series, a webinar forum, may we have a picture taking. Please open your cameras. So uh, please uh, give us your best smile because uh, we don't know uh, what panel are you you are in today. Okay, so we have the first group and uh, then we you have the what second. Again, the best smiles for you guys. Okay. From the third frame. And the last frame. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Are we done? Thank you, National Security Council and uh, our uh, participants from the different uh, state universities and colleges as well as uh, the local government units and the Philippine government agencies. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Uh, certificate of participation also will be given to those who have, uh, of course, completed at least 80% of the uh, of this uh, webinar. Why we are giving it at 80% because we all wanted everyone to attend the whole webinar forum and not just uh, turning on their uh, Zoom accounts and just leaving it there because this is a very, very much important webinar forum, even though if we are not on the academe or we are on practice, this is very much important because this concerns national security. Again, thank you very much from, from the Department of Political Science, the Association of Political Science Students of Ifugao State University, the College of Arts and Sciences, and the whole of Ifugao State University. We would like to thank the National Security Council and the offices of uh, uh, Sir Undersecretary Agdamag and uh, Assistant Secretary Clavejo, and then uh, Assistant Secretary Korokoto. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. And we hope to see you on uh, future webinars. Well, thank you so much. And don't forget to fill out the forms.